I'm Elizabeth Edelman, and I'm here with Tom Valenti, chef of West and um, author of You Don't Have to Be Diabetic to Love This Cookbook. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. Which I love, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, how, uh, how did you get started um, with your career as a professional chef? Boy, well, you know, my interest in cooking went way back to when I was a tyke. Um, you know, I was raised by a single mom. Mm -hmm. And I was an only child, and so I would get shuttled off to Grandma and Grandpa's house when I was very, very young. And my, you know, my memory of them was Grandma in the kitchen and Grandpa in the garden. Mm -hmm. So I always had this thing about cooking because that's what the whole orientation was. And um, as I got older, my mother would often travel for work. And, you know, as I got older, I didn't want to be at Grandma and Grandpa's all the time, although I loved them dearly. Um, so she would leave me alone at home. Mm -hmm. And she would stock up the fridge, and she would leave for, you know, a week or two at a time. So um, my friends sensing free food and no parental guidance would show up, and I would cook. Awesome. Um, so right out of high school, I actually started uh, a one-year apprenticeship in a local restaurant where I grew up. Very nice. So, did you go to school for or just it's all self-taught? No, I, I, you know, I had the good fortune to um, happen my way down to, to the New York metropolitan area not long after I got started. And, you know, I had the, like I said, the good fortune of working with some really good people. Very exciting. So, if you don't mind me asking, um, how did you find out you had diabetes? Well, you know, it is a hereditary in some cases, and um, my dad always warned me, you know, watch your sugar, watch your sugar, and uh, went to the doctor one day, regular checkup, and bingo. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, are you taking any oral meds, or are you on shots? Or no, I take, you know, I take oral medication, mm -hmm. um, and I try to watch my diet. Uh, I try to get exercise. It's, it's you know, it's it's tough with this type of schedule and this environment being surrounded by literally hundreds of pounds of food every day. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure really delicious <laughs> things, too. It's like, you know, it's yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, it's just like that with, with any, any person, I guess. You know, you go to the grocery store and you're around all these delicious things and, yeah. you know. Yeah how to stop from putting it all in the cart. That's my problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, I think the upside to being in a professional kitchen is that everything is fresh. Yeah. So definitely. that's a, you know, that's a, there's a huge advantage there. Definitely. You're not, re you know, not reaching for that packaged mm -hmm. yeah. quick fix. Yeah, and I'm very big at it. I do not like the uh, packaged foods. I, I'm all about fresh ingredients. And that's one of the things I really loved about your cookbook was that you use things like real sugar and real flour and real ingredients instead of any of the substitutes because I just think that that's, you know, really bad for you, all of that. And I think learning about moderation and, and uh, enjoying yeah. the real things is much better than the substitutes. Yeah, no, I, you know, at, at the outset we had explored a number of alternatives from, you know, mayonnaise that was engineered or remastered somehow to uh, artificial sweeteners and actually natural sweeteners that we opted off of only because we wanted to make the book accessible to everyone mm -hmm. and also trying to be sensitive to markets across the country that may not have blue agave nectar. Exactly. You know, and I think that, you know, diabetes in, in part is an economic condition as well. You know, um, if you look at granulated sugar and then you look at the cost of stevia or blue agave nectar, you know, it's 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 expensive, rightfully so, mm -hmm. but it's expensive all the same. Exactly. You know, so we wanted to be able to kind of hopefully navigate the reader through the devils as they stand and say this is what we're dealing with and this is the moderation in which we need to approach it. Definitely. So, yeah. so 
So what's your advice for people that might be newly diagnosed with diabetes that want to start cooking? It's not food? the end of the world. <laughs> um, you know, I think that there have been great advances in, uh, in medicine and, and identifying what... My phone never rings. I swear it's always on vibrate. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of advances in, in medicine, thankfully. Um, you know, but I think that it really is moderation. Um, you know, obviously we all know that there is no true diabetes diet. Um, you know, so it, it really becomes the threshold and the levels and, and being... Uh, sensitive to what you can and cannot have. You kind of have to make your your deal on a daily basis and on a meal basis. Um, you know, from my perspective and why I was so enthusiastic about doing the book was that being a professional cook, I know how to make stuff taste good, hopefully, most of the time. Um, you know, and using alternative methods to kind of trick the palate you know I've been around that block a few times mm -hmm. so you know textural contrasts the crunchy against the creamy and the temperature contrasts the hot against the cold identifying you know salt is another issue here because yeah. diabetes and heart disease go hand in hand and not having salt as a significant part of the arsenal in my field is tough. Oh yeah, it's real It's tough. really tough. You know, and we at the outset decided to take a very, very low profile on sodium mm -hmm. because we wanted to say, hey, you know, we're gonna try to make this stuff taste good. If, you're, if you don't have a, a salt problem, add more. But we wanna start here. Um, you know, so as a as a as an alternative, we reach for fresh citrus juices, lemon juice, lime juice, different vinegars, and that you know that's designed to, you know, perk the palate up a little bit, and it really really works.